Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at Creality's brand new Ender 2 Pro. Now, Creality, full disclosure, sent me this machine uh, to review. And I've had it for about a week, week and a half now, tinkering with it. And I absolutely love this thing. It is phenomenal for printing small parts. Now, the Ender 2 uh, it's a cantilever design. It has a roughly, I think it's a 160 millimeter square bed, so it's about six by six inches. Now, what makes this thing print so incredibly well? Um, I think it's a number of things. This is the just up front. This is the best. I'm getting the best quality prints I've gotten off of any FDM printer I've ever owned. And that includes all of my Ender threes. Ender 3 V2s, uh, Ender 5, uh, Prusa, Mark 2s, and Mark 3s. Now, why is that? Well, the number of factors here I think all are relatively minor, but when you put them all together, they all contribute to a really phenomenal printing machine. Um, the first is, with the smaller bed, you have less mass on the Y-axis. Uh, that means less inertia to overcome when printing. So when you're doing uh, direction changes on the motor, um, you aren't going to see any issues, or you're, you'll see less of an issue with ringing or anything like that than you would see on a larger aluminum bed or a larger glass bed. Um, second, they have a redesigned uh, fan cooling duct on this for the parts cooling. Um, on my other Creality printers, it seems to be aimed upward a little more, like towards the base of the nozzle. On this one, it's aimed down right at the nozzle tip. So you're getting better uh, cooling on the filament as it comes out the nozzle. Um, the other thing is, this has a shorter Bowden tube on it, which means retractions are going to be more effective. When I started tinkering with this, I thought I might even be able to reduce the retraction length on my Cura profiles, but using my Ender 2, or I mean my Ender 3 V2 profiles for Cura, um, I'm getting phenomenal print results, so I'm not adjusting that at all. I'm keeping it just as it is, and as you can see here, uh, these are two 28 millimeter scale skeleton sculpts that I've done, and there is no, I mean, there's might be a couple of two three very thin hairs on it you know stringing but nothing appreciable there's a couple of zits that are you're going to get with any machine but the surface quality on these is better than i've gotten on any other printer i've ever tried and it's just uh, you know i've not done anything to this other than what you're going to see in this video now in addition to the physical modifications to the printer i'm about to show you um these were printed using my custom Cura miniature profile for a 0.3 nozzle. Uh, that profile and all of my other profiles are linked in this video description. And you can find them over on the Fat Dragon Games website under the resources menu. Aside from that, there was no other calibrating done on this machine. This is all stock settings. Uh, the extruder was not calibrated or anything else. Um, the only custom settings are what I used in my Cura profile. So, uh, for this video, I'm going to cover the modifications I've made to this printer uh, in order to make it a dedicated miniatures uh, printer. To start with, we're going to throw a 0.3 millimeter nozzle on it, a better uh, Bowden tube coupler, and a new Bowden tube. And so, to get started with that, let's heat it up to about 205. Once it heats up, we're going to push the filament in. Uh, what this does is every time you print, heat creep makes the filament expand a little bit up above the nozzle. If you try to pull it out, uh, it can jam. So what we do is we push the filament in about an inch or so, uh, and that will get that uh, blob taken care of. And once you've pushed it in about an inch, then rapidly withdraw it. Once you've done this, we're going to run to remove the uh, screw that locks the front fan shroud in place. Just use the hex key that came with the printer and get in there and take the screw off. Next, the front of the shroud has uh, two small spring clips on either side. Um, 
what you're going to want to do is take a hex wrench or a screwdriver and come in here and just gently pry that little clip aside just pull it out and it's going to free itself from the back mounting plate now you have one on the left side there and you've got two on the right so just get in there i'm sorry my arm blocked that view a little bit but uh just pull them out and the fan shroud will come free then now it's the fan is still attached so you're gonna have to set it on top there like this out of the way now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the insulator sleeve and that just pops off Next, we're going to remove the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now, it's important that you grip the heat or the actual hot end assembly there with a wrench. Uh, you don't want that twisting and uh, breaking the heat break. Uh, so hold that while you loosen the nozzle. Take the old nozzle out. Now, if you notice, there's something different on this from other Creality machines. There is a ground wire attached to the heat sink. And Creality, I'm guessing, has done this to dissipate static electricity on the hot end. Uh, this does run down a uh, main board. Uh, if you, when you watch my construction video, you'll see where that attaches. Um, but before we start taking this apart, that is going to have to come off. Next, we're going to remove the retaining clip for the Bowden tube coupler. Just grip that with a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it off. Once that is off, you need to loosen the screw that the grounding wire is attached to. We're going to take the screw out, remove the grounding wire, and then reattach the screw for when we work on the hot end. Otherwise, the one remaining screw uh, is not going to be enough to hold it tight and let us work on it effectively. So just take this out, uh, slip the wire off of the back of the screw, and then put the screw back in where you just took it out from. Next up, we're going to remove the Bowden tube coupler. Just loosen that with a wrench. Sometimes it's a little hard, but once you get it started, it should come out pretty easily. Um, you can always uh, twist the Bowden tube, free it at the back end, and use that, and twist that if it's locked in there tight, and that'll help you unscrew it. Um, this is fairly new, so it's easy to do just by finger. So I'm going to take that out, pull the Bowden tube out, and looking at the end, there is some uh, built-up filament there. Um, so I'm just going to put a, since I'm replacing everything else, I'm going to put a fresh Bowden tube on this. Um, it's really not worth doing all this work for, you know, to save about 75 cents worth of tubing. Um, we're putting a new coupler on. We're going to put a new nozzle on. Let's just put a new Bowden tube on as well. So I'm going to release it at the back end where it hooks into the extruder. You can just unscrew that old coupler that lets you work on it a little easier. Pull it out through the uh, zip ties there. Now I'm going to put the old coupler back on. Uh, if you buy the pack of couplers that I have linked for Amazon, you'll get new uh, couplers for the back of it too there. It doesn't matter which one you use because it's not a critical part. It's the one that's on the hot end that you want to replace. So I'm just going to use the old tube to measure off the right distance for a fresh piece of tubing. Use my tube cutter to cut it. I did it about a half inch longer than the original one. That way, if I have to change a nozzle out anytime soon, I've got a little bit of uh, excess I can clip off and not replace the tube. Now I'm going to use the old tube to snake through the heated hot end. And that what that does is clean out any excess filament that is leaked. I'm going to put on the new coupler. And I finger tightened it and then loosened it one turn. And now I'm going to just put the new nozzle on. I'm not holding the hot end with a wrench because I'm not going to tighten it at this point. I'm just inserting it to the point I feel resistance. And then I'm going to back it off and loosen it one half turn. So turn it until it wants to stop and then loosen it one half turn or maybe three quarters of a turn. Next, we're going to insert the Bowden tube through the new coupler. Make sure you push it all of the way down until you feel it hit the back of the new nozzle. Okay, this is critical. You do not want a gap between this and the nozzle. So push down hard, make sure it's all the way down. Now we're going to tighten up the nozzle. So you're going to want to grip uh, that hot end with a wrench while you're doing this. 
tighten the nozzle down against the back of that tube get that nice and tight and then we're going to tighten the coupler to finish this up here just use your wrench get in there get the coupler hunkered down what this is going to do is cause it to really nice uh have a nice tight bite into that bowden tube um get that on there now you need to take out the screw that the grounding wire was inserted through put the grounding wire back in place tighten that back up nice and tight and while you're at it check the other screw from the factory make sure everything's tight on this uh, if the hot end wobbles or sways it will cause uh, severe stringing so next up we're going to put the uh, insulator sock back in place remember this is still heated so do it with needle nose pliers and use a wrench to assist but you can get it in place pretty easily like this just don't touch the actual hot end now we're going to put the uh, retaining clip back on the bowden tube coupler mine doesn't want to go very well on this new coupler it's too tight and i think it's going to split out so i'm going to put a zip tie on it under the black collar um, i zip tie all of my machines because sometimes those uh, inserts can split and then it allows your tube to slip so zip tie isn't going to do that just put it in place like this clip the excess off uh, next up you're going to want to put your shroud in place make sure the spring clips on both sides snap into position it should be nice and tight at this point now i'm going to zip tie the wire harness to the uh, new bowden tube in two spots one is about a half inch to an inch above the hot end there as you see and then the second one will be about another you know four or five six inches above that you do not want these tight you don't want to crush the wires in that wiring harness what you want to do is just have the harness and the bowden tube uh, connected together so the tube gives it some guidance and um, uh, keeps it kind of rigid so it doesn't bend to over at the hot end um, you want to be able to free spin those um, zip ties. They don't. You don't want them so tight you can't free spin them. Now we're going to put the screw back in the rear side of the hot end assembly to uh, make sure that fan shroud doesn't come loose. Get that in there nice and tight. Next up, we're going to use some PTFE plumbing tape. Uh, you can get this at any hardware store. It's used for sealing threads on uh, plumbing pipes. Uh, we're going to use it for our spool holder. And what this does is it's going to reduce a lot of the friction uh, and make the filament feed better. When you put this on, make sure you wind it in the direction that the filament spool is going to turn. That way, it's not loosening the tape up when it's turning. It's actually tightening the tape. So I usually put two layers of tape on. Just go down to one end and then back to where you started. Cut the tape off. And then I put a small piece of adhesive tape on that end to keep it from unraveling. And this is going to reduce friction on your spool quite a bit and make it feed a lot smoother. Now, once all this is done, re-level your printer and you're going to be good to go. Uh, and as you see here, these are two Fat Dragon Games Dragon Lock miniatures. Uh, I print skeletons as my torture test miniatures simply because they are so difficult to print. Uh, they're going to show flaws really uh, obviously with uh, the, the thin uh, bones. Uh, these two miniatures are my favorite to use because of the thin sword and the spear. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot to turn this Ender 2 Pro into a fantastic miniatures machine. The last bit of advice I want to give you on this is make sure you don't skimp on the quality of the filament you run in this machine if you're printing miniatures. Um, I strongly recommend that you use eSun PLA Plus. Um, that's what I'm using for these. Uh, it is a very high quality filament. I never had uh, issues with clogs with this or under extrusion or anything else. Um, it's not the cheapest filament out there, but if you need super critical details like you do on miniatures, it really is the best choice of uh, filaments to put through your machine. So anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please click that like and subscribe buttons. Thank you.